Hello, it's Arthur from Wisely Automotive. In this vlog, we continue where we left off, and that's working on this Stealth 94 amp hour BMW i3 range extender. I've got the car up in the air now, a full service was just done, and visually everything else looks perfect underneath, other than the typical front suspension gaiters that we see on almost every car of this age. With those sorted, I can move on to the last cosmetic touches, starting with the kidney grills. To remove the standard silver and protonic blue set, all that's required is to remove a few screws from the underside of the bonnet, then carefully work the pry tool around to loosen all the clips. You're also up against some 3M tape, so go slow and steady to avoid snapping anything. The old ones are going back in the box and definitely won't go to waste, as we often see these damaged or pitted on cars that arrive into us, so having a spare set will definitely come in handy one day. Here's a quick before and after. We all really think it completes the blacked out look we were going for, but let us know what you think in the comments. Even while washing the car, I can't stop admiring it. Super pleased with these wheels. Um, definitely the right choice. They really match the, the whole stealth look. I think it's gonna be a really nice car. And we've uh, we just blinged up the, the bolts with some caps. It's eight quid, but given how nice they look, just sets it, sets it off. Oh, yeah. I'll give you an update in a second. Okay, so wash is done. So we're nearing completion now. We've got the black grills in place. We've got the gloss black wheels on, along with these little caps. Gators are done. Full service has been done. Obviously all washed. We've got a bit of work left on the interior. I'd say we're probably 80% there in terms of cleaning. Just a few last little bits, but otherwise all good. So all that's left now is to put on these black strakes, which came up really nice. Those are gonna look great. Got to do an MOT and then just a full polish. And then we are ready to get this up for sale. So with that complete, here's the finished result. Moving on to a different subject, you joined me on the ramp and I wanted to go over tires. A few months ago, we alluded to doing a review on, uh, I think on our Facebook page, we mentioned we do a review of the four uh, options available to BMW i3 drivers. That hasn't happened yet. It's very much still on the agenda. I think I slightly overestimated how much work, planning um, and money it would take to, uh, to do it, uh, what I would say, properly it's very easy for us to just go out and film it two or three people uh, also we're not really experts so it'd be good to actually get an expert involved and uh, like i say once you start doing all that teams four different cars uh, testing location closed off the road it starts costing you thousands and taking days of of what would otherwise be uh, work hours so it's still on the cards it'll probably be in 2021 at some point it would be brilliant if we could get any advice or till if you know anyone interested in joining and helping out with that particularly someone with uh, with, with a professional knowledge on tires or tire reviews that would be fantastic um, it's also even better because they'll be impartial whereas um, as a seller of, uh, of michelin we might not be so that's very much still on the cards but in the meantime i'm just putting four new wheels or i shouldn't say four new wheels four tires on this car here we have gone for the michelins so what i thought i'd do is given that we have all four tires here i just go through them this is like i say far from a review it's more just a uh, look at the tire treads how much you get on each one 
and just some general observations. Like I say, there's not much more to it than that, um, but given that they're here, we obviously get through a lot of tires and uh, I was here at the back anyway, I thought, why not? So without any further ado, let's have a look first at the, so if I introduce them, so this is the, the Bridgestone, which for a good few years was basically the only option to BMW i3 drivers. It's available across the range. So you've got a 155 section, 175 section, and 195 section, which supports the i3S drivetrain. But two uh, types of tire, uh, within the Ecopia range. You've got the EP500, which is vastly the more popular one. And there's also an EP600, which is a really interesting tire. It's an all weather tire with a very, very strange uh, tread pattern, but nevertheless, I'll mention that in a, in a future video. But yeah, so that's the Bridgestone, which we're used to and we know uh, and are quite familiar with. Then we move on to the Michelin, which launched earlier this year in 2021. Uh, about a year before that, maybe two years before that, the Continental launched, and then the Nankang was on the market, I think first out of the three contenders to Bridgestone, probably around 2015, 2016, something like that. Um, I'm pretty sure all of them are available for 20 inch uh, i3 wheels as well, but none of them are available in 195 section on a 20 inch, which is what the i3s needs. So at the moment, if you have an i3s, the Bridgestone is your only option. Moving on to treads. So the Bridgestone tire, I'm just going to get my gauge here. Let's zero that out. There we go. So all these tires have been positioned with the outside edge on the right hand side. So starting from the inside, we've got 4.8, 5.9. This one's always a bit hard to get because of this unusual uh, tread pattern, but 5.8. So not much for your money and you can understand why Quite often people get less than 10,000 miles, especially on an i3S at the rear. But nevertheless, that's what we've got. Looking at the Michelin, starting from the inside, 5.79, 6.18, So quite an improvement there. You're going to get more life out of that. But like I say, I'm not coming, I'm not sort of giving an opinion on these. I'm purely just giving you the, the treads, uh, the facts, and we'll actually look at which one performs better in, uh, in this future video that hopefully we will get around to doing. Uh, the Continental. So this is significantly um, better than the other three in terms of what you get. So you get 6.2, 6.5, and 6.1. So in terms of tread, I mean, we're talking points of millimeters here, but yeah, you get a lot more meat on your tire with uh, with the Continental. And lastly, the Nankang. So inside edge first, 5 5.54, 5.84, 5.6. So yeah, there you go. Uh, we'll probably put a graph up now showing uh, what those are. Uh, like I say, this is for the 17519 tire, which is easily the most common i3 tire because it's the rear um, driven axle of the non S car and supports three of the four different alloy wheel styles. So this is what is most commonly ordered when we're, for example, selling uh, selling the Michelins. Kind of. Um, personal observations. I think there's not much in it. The Bridgestone, for reasons unknown, comes with very little tread. Um, if I showed you that EP600 tire, which I'll try and dig out one day in a future video, you'll see what I mean. I think it starts from new on this inner edge with about 2.2 mil or something, or 2.4 mil. Uh, really not fair, I'd say, considering it's quite an expensive tire. But these two, well, and, and the Nankang, of course, brought a lot more, I'd say, value for money to this. Uh, but really the, the one major observation, in terms of ride, 
I would say this is a noticeably louder tire. Whenever we get a car in on the Nankangs, we sigh because it's as soon as you drive the car, you, you can get, you get a lot more road noise. And I'd say the ride is a bit harsher. Like I say, I'm not a professional tire reviewer and this is exactly why we want to get someone in who really knows what they're talking about. But we have sold over 300 of these, driven probably close to 400 of them. So we know uh, one or two things about it. Uh, these two though, really, give best of both worlds you get good levels of tread sort of six mil across the board in in terms of the continental a touch more than that and it's a very smooth much softer ride i can only imagine it's because you've physically got more rubber between you and the ground but uh, obviously you know sidewalls come into that and even sort of pushing into the ecopia sidewall it's a lot softer so maybe the additional rigidity of the Michelin and the Continental um, help give that softer and quieter ride as well. But uh, but yeah, the closing point I'm gonna make is just that with all of these, because we're often, it's a really you know, popular question we're asked from people who've bought cars from us or just general sort of Facebook inquiries, is what tires should I fit? Now, obviously we're gonna say Michelin because we make uh, a tenner or so on each one we sell, but the truth is really it comes down to price and that goes both ways. When this tire is 70 or 80 pounds uh, per tire for sale on, on the internet, then it is, if, if, if you're on a tight budget, buy it. I think for essentially near half the price of the Bridgestone, that's value for money and you can live with a slightly louder tire. On the, on the flip side, quite often, um, so I think right now this is uh, being filmed in November 2021, this tire is ludicrously expensive everywhere. So why someone would pay the same, if not more money than a Bridgestone or any of these uh, for, for, for this, what I would personally say inferior tire is beyond me. Uh, likewise, like I said, it, it goes both ways. If either of these tires are uh, you know, only slightly more expensive than the Bridgestone or even the same price, I would go for that. Um, but sometimes these Bridgestones, due to stock levels, etc., they can be released at really low prices. So if you get these for sort of 100 quid each, then stick with the Bridgestone. It's ultimately the tyre which BMW or the manufacturer who worked with BMW when developing the i3. So it's whereas these have not. So to that end, there's still definitely an argument for the Bridgestone. In the case of i3S drivers, it's your only option for the moment. Um, but yeah, that's uh, that's about it on that subject. Also with the Michelin, I mean, not to, you'll be making out that I'm slightly biased here, but that's a pretty cool sidewall. So I think aesthetics come into it a little bit, but, uh, but yeah, anyway, on to the next thing. Now to finish this video up, I just wanted to show you these lovely 2022 calendars that we've had commissioned and are available to order. All profits will be going to charity, uh, Cancer Research UK, and there's two to choose from. There's this tidy little desk calendar, uh, which you can see here, and then there's also gonna be an A3 wall calendar. This is actually a four sized, uh, but we've decided it's a little bit too small. So the final uh, print run will be in A3. And also um, this background will be white instead of black, just in case you wanna circle your key dates, etc. So yeah, if you're a i3 aficionado or looking for a Christmas gift for someone who is, please consider ordering one. To avoid wastage, we're only gonna be printing the amount required. And the ordering deadline is this Sunday, that's the 5th of December. So it's basically just a last shout out to anyone who's missed it on our social media. We'll put a link in the description and please only order if you're in the UK. And that concludes this video. I slash we will be back with more soon. Please consider subscribing not to miss out. Thank you.